Let's shine by seeing the best in all of us and by looking out for each other. Let's stay healthy. Let's shine together. Welcome to Let's Talk Together, and I'm Sherry Harlan, program host for Let's Talk Together. Today, we are joined with, by Dr. Braden Kurdowski, and he is our sports medicine physician, So, and you're here to talk about Men's Health Month. Absolutely. And, um, and later, we'll be joined by Dorothy Lotton. and so um, tell us um, how you came to read. Sure. So... I, uh, I came to read um, about three years ago, almost three years ago now. Uh, it's kind of my first job out of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Usually there's, for sports medicine, there's either, there's a residency and then you do a fellowship in sports medicine. And so this is the first job out of fellowship. Um, and I did do my undergrad in, at Taylor, just north of Muncie, That's so a little bit familiar with the area, but it has been a great kind of first job, get to do a lot of things that I envisioned my first job to have and um, treat the patient population that I, I want to be treating. Well, thank you. Um, and with June being Men's Health Month, what are some tips you have for men to focus on their health? Oh, absolutely. Um, and a lot of these probably could be applied to to uh, men, men and women, mm -hmm. um, but especially for men, I think um, there's this kind of relaxation of normal exercise and a relaxation of diet, especially as I think about um, the man maybe in their 30s or 40s as you know, their metabolism isn't as great as it once was in, in high school and in their early 20s. Um, and so we, we probably don't change our diet too much, but we keep, or we kind of keep eating, but the, the metabolism goes down. So in that respect, thinking about making sure you're getting in enough protein on a daily basis, um, which usually is not hard, but we, we can sometimes get a little lax in that, especially as we get into our older decades. Uh, and then probably at the same time, when it comes to diet, talking about uh, a healthy intake of uh, fruits and vegetables, and, and not just the the, the drinks or the, the smoothies, but the actual fruit and the actual vegetable um, because of the fiber and what it can do for um, you as, as kind of a whole benefit to your body when it comes to when we think of the, G, the GI system, but also the cardiovascular system as well. Um, kind of on that same line in, in diet, you know, thinking about making sure we're not overeating too much, right? Um, our, our weight can get a little bit out of control sometimes in the 40s and the 50s and the 60, uh, 60 year olds. And, and, you know, exercise is very important for keeping that in check and has wonderful health benefits. Um, but people, people uh, probably undervalue the importance of diet in keeping that weight in check um, and making sure that we're getting good macronutrients, the, the proteins um, and, and, and less the, the carbohydrates and the processed. Foods. And also as people start to age some of what my, I've personally seen that people maybe in high school college they were very very active and then they got into the work world and things happen and they start having children and then that's one of the they forget about exercising their cells Oh, I mean, absolutely. And yes, life happens. Like, there are different <laughs> stages of life. And, you know, right, right now I've got three, three little ones at home. My wife is a rock star. But there is less <laughs> time to, you know, go play basketball with friends or go exercise or go to the gym. Um, and so there probably needs to be a little bit more conscious decision to say, okay, I am going to go work out um, for X amount of minutes a day or total amount of minutes a week, you know, in order to um, keep keep myself at a healthy weight and a, and a good level of physical fitness. Um, and with three young ones, you can, you can chase them sometimes. I mean, so. that's true. That's true. The the three year old is is very fast. He runs away a lot. He uh, yeah. It's 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 not a 
not a dull moment at home. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the health screenings that men should keep in mind to take regularly? Yeah, I, I think going from kind of our, almost our baseline, when you think about health screenings, you have blood pressure, uh, blood sugar, um, and just kind of the cholesterol. And, and those are applicable to, to uh, women as well. Um, but usually that blood pressure, getting that checked once a year, really important to go to uh, your primary care uh, visit to get that blood pressure checked because cardiovascular disease is, you know, the most important probably thing that we can do or the most important uh, disease that we can fight um, and detect very early with elevations in blood pressure and whatnot. Um, the blood sugar is important. We all... Um, kind of know the, the danger of, uh, dangers of diabetes and how it can affect um, things down the road. And so staying, um, w uh, staying up on knowing where your blood sugar is at and where your hemoglobin A1C is really important. Generally, we recommend if, you, if that level has been normal, checking it ev not every, it doesn't have to be every year, but especially if it has been elevated in the past, staying on top of that on a yearly basis. Um, a lot of people think of the testicular cancer screenings similar to how we think of, you know, mammograms in right. women. Um, but in the past, um, we've kind of done a lot of research on testicular cancer screenings. Um, and actually, the, the vast majority of research out there doesn't support a, a screening type of exam for that because testicular cancer has such a, a high cure rate even we, when we catch it at more severe levels of disease. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say that you should ignore you know, urinary symptoms. Absolutely, that's the importance of, of having that primary care doctor relationship. But um, as far as a screening test for testicular cancer, we have kind of gone away from that in the past decades. And you brought up on, um, on a prior slide when it was saying make oh, yeah. sure you have a relationship with your primary care doctor. And can we speak on how often, especially men, kind of forget about their... Pro a it's like absolutely. I haven't, had a, <laughs> I haven't been to the doctor since I quit playing basketball. You're like, okay, that was like 25 years ago. Yes. So <laughs> We are stubborn, absolutely. Um, I guess I will admit it on, on camera. Mm -hmm. um, and and there's a lot of, lot of times that where it's like, well, okay, if I don't feel like there's a problem, I'm not going to go see the doctor. But... That's kind of the importance of are these screening tests and, and these screening things that we do to detect the diseases that aren't detectable at first, but if we can detect them, we can right. treat them better. And, you know, instead of treat them, we can prevent them. Blood pressure, diabetes, things like that. And, and once again, I can't harp and say it. I'm going to harp on this. <laughs> Your primary care doctor, before they get to you or anyone else, if they have a primary care doctor and relationship, that um, that would help tremendously. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And then what are some of the other things we're thinking about as people age in their overall health? Absolutely. Um, when we start thinking about in your 60s and your 70s and your 80s, we start thinking about falls, balance, prevention, things like that. And that's where another uh, important part from the musculoskeletal orthopedic kind of side of things, um, not exactly exercise, We I don't, prescribe exercises on a daily basis. Usually I work with physical therapists to, to go down that pathway if a patient is injured. But the importance of, of weight training and weight bearing exercise um, to prevent falls, to maintain bone density, um, because that, that's what happens when, when you don't have a strong bones, when you don't have dense bones, well, it is more easily, your hip is more easily fractured when you fall, or you have a vertebral fracture in your low back when you fall, and then that's where things can kind of start to fall off the cliff and go downhill. Now, um, so I understand you have specific training in sports uh, medicine. Yes. Can you describe that? Sure. What is sports medicine? So sports medicine, uh, I guess I, I should take a step back. There's kind of actually two uh, directions that sports medicine um, and sports medicine providers that a patient could potentially see. Um, one comes from the primary care side. So I, that is what I, why I do. Um, I was a, a family medicine resident, so I had three years of family medicine training, more in the primary care, and then I did my sports medicine fellowship. Um, I have counterparts out there uh, in the, the medical world that they were orthopedic surgeons um, first. They did an orthopedic surgery residency, and then they did additional training in surgical um, sports medicine. So 
you tear your ACL, you go see an orthopedic surgeon. Um, now, if you tear your ACL, you may end up seeing me first just because I'm available more to kind of start the process of getting that diagnosed. Um, but we work as a team kind of together. Um, also in the sports medicine training, I do a lot of non-surgical orthopedics. Uh, so whether that be managing those acute injuries that don't need surgery or frankly, trying to prevent um, patients from needing surgery. Um, and that isn't always possible. Sometimes arthritis of the knee or the hip or the shoulder or other joints, you know, just is, is too severe that, yeah, the actual better answer would be getting a knee replacement or a shoulder replacement or a hip replacement. Um, but there's a lot of other treatments that we can use that aren't surgery that um, I have some extra expertise in because of my fellowship. And because of your background, when you, when people hear sports medicine and maybe someone just had that they had a fall but they're referred to this the sports medicine uh, physician so often if I think it gets a little misleading to an individual patient who might not understand uh, absolutely yeah. I, I see that often um, patients come in they're like I don't know why I'm following up with the sports medicine physician <laughs> I went to the ER they said nothing was nothing needed surgery um, but I I, I, I wasn't playing a sport when I had this injury, and, and so we have a little conversation about, well, okay, yeah, I, I get that, um, but I'm, I'm the guy you want to see if we want to you know, get you back to what you were before this injury happened, um, and not have, not have surgery, maybe not need surgery. What would you like for our, um, our viewers to know the, probably the biggest takeaway from after seeing you or what you would like people to know about what you do over the profession? Um, well, I guess it's probably less about what I do, but it's more about that internal motiv motivation. Um, I think when I look at my patient population, the patients I see, most are very highly motivated. It's the, the high school athlete or it's the, the weekend warrior that wants to get back to, you know, playing pickleball or going out and riding their bike or, or cycling or, or you know, even getting up into older ages and they want to keep exercising and they want to be around and be physically fit for their, for their grandchildren. Um, but ultimately, I can't follow you home and say, hey, you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. And so it, that internal motivation is probably more important than coming to see me, frankly. Great. <laughs> and if the... If someone was interested in going to, um, to visit the um, your primary the primary the primary care offices or coming uh, to your office, you see them, we have them listed, mm -hmm. and also we have a walk-in clinic we're going to speak about a little later that um, they can also and they don't need a referral for that walk-in clinic, correct? That that's correct. Um... Yeah, I work in the orthopedic office, but because I'm a primary care physician, you don't need a referral to see me. You can always call and get scheduled with me. The other flip side of that is, yes, we have this ortho walk-in now clinic uh, that is open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, um, staffed by a wonderful staff. And occasionally I'll have a little opening in my <laughs> my day and I'll, I'll maybe see an ortho walk-in patient here and there. Um, but the, no, you don't need a referral to go see the, any well, provider great. there. Well, we want to thank you, Dr. Kozowski, for joining us today. Oh, absolutely. Thank and you thank for you for me. joining us on Let's Talk Together. Let's shine by seeing the best in all of us and by looking out for everyone's well-being. Let's shine by staying true to ourselves while surging toward the future. Let's shine with the best care possible. And by treating you here, right in your hometown. Let's look out for each other. Let's stay healthy. Let's shine together. Hi, and welcome back to Let's Talk Together. And we are now joined by Dorothy Law. Lolithan, and she's a physician's assistant that works in our Reed Orthopedic Walk-In Clinic. Welcome, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us a little about your background and how you came to Reed. 
Thank you. Um, so I've been a PA or a physician assistant for about 20 years. Uh, I've worked primarily in orthopedics. Um, I've been at Reed for about three years now. <clears throat> and so can you describe the walk-in clinic? Mm -hmm. The walk-in clinic is for acute injuries or even chronic problems. Um, if you don't have the time to make an appointment or it just seems convenient on a day uh, that you have time, you can come to the walk-in clinic. The walk-in clinic is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, um, except for holidays. Now, <clears throat> is that, and how did the walk-in clinic come about? So I know that there's always the emergency department, mm -hmm. but that can often is very busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is specific for musculoskeletal mm -hmm. This is specific problems? for orthopedic problems, absolutely. Okay. Um, it's a wonderful uh, benefit for the community. Um, it's not for emergencies, so uh, if you feel like you have a life-threatening emergency or something like that, you should be going to the emergency room. Uh, this is for um, any injury that you have um, that you're concerned about. You just want somebody to look at it and tell you, uh, a lot of times we uh, treat conservatively, which means you don't need surgery, but depending on your injury, we may refer you to a surgeon, uh, either in-house or at another specialty. So for instance, um, I was at the softball game and someone <coughs> broke their leg. Do they mm -hmm. come to the walk-in clinic or they what can, happens? They can certainly come to the walk-in clinic. Um, if there happens to be bones sticking out, you might want to go straight to the emergency room, uh, but we, we can handle a lot of stuff at the walk-in clinic. Uh, we do injections, we do um, casting or splinting, we do x-rays. We do not have the capability of doing MRIs or CT scans, uh, but we can refer you to that if we feel that that's necessary. Were there any other services that are provided there? Um, there is an athletic cl training clinic uh, that that takes scheduled patients. So if you have uh, an athlete or a, a sports fanatic, uh, usually it's between the ages of middle school and college, uh, the athletic training clinic does a really good job. Uh, they have a lot of equipment there, a lot of um, just lots of different modalities that they can work with and kind of get you up to your tip top shape. So those athletic trainers, they're actually at um, mm -hmm. at the uh, walk in, near the walk-in clinic mm -hmm. facility mm -hmm. at the orthopedic uh, center there. So the orthopedic center has the athletic training clinic. It has um, a spine specialty department. Uh, they have general orthopedics. They have pain management. Dr. Kedrowski has his sports medicine clinic there as well, and then the walk-in clinic. And those that's different than the athletic trainers that are actually at schools. So, yes, okay. yes. They may come, I, I'm not sure what their schedule is, they may come to the athletic training clinic some nights or days or whatever, um, but it is staffed by the athletic trainers. Okay, because often with our athletic trainers are so closely aligned with mm -hmm. various schools yep. that people, it's like, that's my athletic mm -hmm. trainer right yep. there. So I yep. want to make sure that people are aware of mm -hmm. the, the difference. Yep. And what kind of injuries are seen at the walk-in clinic? We see a lot of sprains and strains, people that you know miss a step, fall down the steps. We see a lot of fractures of the ankles, wrists. We do a lot of injections. We have people that come in with chronic problems, chronic arthritis of their knees or shoulders, and we'll do injections um, just at their visit there. Um, sometimes we'll set up physical therapy for them. Sometimes they need further testing. We'll do MRIs or CT scans. Um, we see um, just any orthopedic problem, anything that relates to your bones or joints, uh, we see in the walk-in clinic. And they have a, just a, um, a wide variety mm -hmm. of, of services. Yep. It's, it's almost, um, I've actually been there, so mm -hmm. I know you have a wide variety of, yep. of services, um, and it looks like a whole different area area even though um, your own location mm -hmm. but when you come in there it's yeah. at the walk-in clinic has its own little areas so, mm -hmm. yep. so that yep. people can come in there mm -hmm. and um, if someone needs additional care um, what happens so say for example we get um, a, a pediatric patient or a child that comes in that may need um, 
further treatment, then we can deal with here. Uh, we don't have a pediatric orthopedist per se, uh, so we will refer them out to a children's hospital for specialty care. Um, sometimes there are injuries that are more severe or complicated, um, then we feel comfortable taking care of there and we will refer out to kind of a, a, a tertiary center or a center that has um, more specialized orthopedics. I'm going to challenge you now, Dorothy. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so walk me through, I came in, it looks like mm -hmm. I've done something with my leg. Okay. All right. And I was like, I can't walk, I'm in a, mm -hmm. and I need a wheelchair to get mm -hmm. me in the door. Um, what would be the process? So you would come to the, the walk, you would come to the orthopedic center. Mm -hmm. uh, inside the front doors, there are wheelchairs if you need those. Um, and you would just come up to the front desk. They would ask you if you had an appointment. You would say, no, I need to see the walk-in clinic. They would put you on the schedule. Um, since the walk-in clinic is basically whoever shows up, we see. Sometimes there's a little bit of a wait. Sometimes there's not. Uh, they generally give you a heads up if it's going to be more than an hour. <laughs> um, so be patient with us <laughs> if we have a lot of patients. Um, and uh, they'll check you in, the nurses will bring you back, they'll get your vitals, they'll get your history. If we need x-rays, they'll order x-rays. Um, and then the provider, either myself or one of the other providers will come in and evaluate you. If you need further testing, we'll order that. If we need medication or therapy or something like that, we'll order that as well. So from the time I come in to whatever, to how long it, it took to be seen, mm -hmm. then I'm actually am, it's like a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. The process generally, um, from the time you come in, if there is nobody in front of you waiting, um, by the time you see a provider should be about a half an hour. Now, if there's multiple people before you, that increases the time. But. The, um, aside from the, uh, usually the normal things, mm -hmm. what's something that someone might land at the ortho and then they can't understand why they're at the ortho, um, besides from falls. <laughs> so uh, clarify that question for okay. me, I'm sorry. So for instance, a person um, has said I'm, they have been t um, taken to the orth orthopedic, um, to the walk-in clinic, mm -hmm. but maybe they didn't understand. I said, well, I just, I just bumped my knee, mm -hmm. so I probably don't need to be here. But in essence, that it's probably a little more serious than they anticipated. So trying to explain that to um, people and why they would need to mm -hmm. come to the ortho. So we see a lot of patients that um, don't have serious injuries. It's more of, oh, I stumbled. <laughs> I, yeah, um, I was. <laughs> we have some farmers in the area, so you know that sometimes there's injuries with animals. I've had patients that have been stepped on um, by cows <laughs> uh, recently, and uh, just different things like that. And they're not sure if they have something that needs to be like a cast or something. And so just coming in to get checked out is, you know, I'm so happy when I. Ha when I don't have to tell them, oh, you have a fracture, we need to put you in a cast for four to six weeks or something like that. It, it's so nice to be able to say, I think this is either just a bruise or I think this may just be a sprain and we can treat it like this and this is kind of what we're expecting in the future. So even if you don't think it's a serious injury, it's okay to come to the walk-in. We're happy to see you, we're happy to um, kind of reassure you and um, Go from there. Give you a little bit of peace of mind, I think. And that's something that uh, often we, we don't think of ourselves as a rural hospital system, mm -hmm. but we are. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't think about uh, some farm animals. We, yes, we have that farm type animal of, <laughs> injuries. Those type of injuries. <laughs> yep. So it's always interesting to see mm -hmm. how that would go. If, what would you like people to know about the uh, walk-in center that um, we haven't covered? Um, so the walk-in, like I said, is it's kind of first come, first seen. So if there is a wait, you do have the opportunity to make an appointment with one of the providers. 
Um, some people get a little frustrated if they have to wait, and again, we have no control over that. It's just based on whoever shows up. So uh, if you prefer not to wait, there are openings. We can get you in with a scheduled provider. That may be a little bit easier for you. If you are open to waiting, just be patient with us. The staff really works hard to try to um, get you back, and I know that I work hard and the other providers too, so just be patient. We're doing the best we can. <laughs> when it says you can make your own appointment, can you do that through my read? Mm -hmm. Yep. My read yep. chart? Yeah. And um, sometimes people get a little confused um, because it's a it's a walk-in clinic. Some people get confused with urgent care and may try to self-check in for um, a sore throat or a headache or something like that. Um, the staff is really good about seeing that pop up on the schedule and, and contacting the patient and say, actually, you need to see urgent care, not necessarily the walk-in. The verbiage sometimes is a little confusing. Oh, great. I can understand that. Well, we want to thank you thank very you so much, much for joining us, Dorothy. And thank you all for joining us on Let's Talk Together. Let's shine by seeing the best in all of us and by treating you here, right in your hometown. Let's look out for each other. Let's stay healthy. Let's shine together.